everyone, Adrian here. So today I wanted to talk about something that bothered me as a classical musician. This video is in collaboration with my good friend Morella Reborn, and you can check out her channel in the description below. She's really cool, she does a lot of DIY stuff, a lot of stuff about classical music, and things like that. She's really awesome. As most of you know, I am training to be an opera singer. I am a dramatic mezzo-soprano with a four octave vocal range, and I've been taking voice lessons for about six years from my voice teacher, Deb, who's awesome. In fact, I have a lesson with her today, which is why I just had a really carby lunch so I can feel nice and energetic for it. Woohoo! So I wanted to talk to you about something that bothered me as a classical musician. Here's what bothers me. When it comes to solo performers, whether they are violinists, freaking saxophonists, percussionists, Pianists, you know, um, flautists, uh, cellists, or solo singers. Doesn't matter what kind of solo performer you are, you are judged so harshly on how you dress. Ugh, this bothered me so much throughout the years. This bothered me so much. As a matter of fact, when I was competing at state voice competition in my senior year of high school, I got some relatively good scores. Not awesome by any means because I screwed up because I can't sing in English. <laughs> and what happened is I wore lace tights with the dress that I was wearing. It was a really nice like v-neck dress about that deep. It's not really that deep. It has black lace sleeves and I thought wearing some black lace tights would help kind of help the outfit along. And I didn't wear heels that were too high. I didn't wear makeup that was too dark. I had my hair back. So I look at the judge's notes because there were three separate judges, I looked at one of their notes and they said, rethink the lace tights, they're a bit distracting. And I'm just like... Really? Lace tights are distracting you? Really? So needless to say, I was pretty annoyed by that. And then in reading about Emily Autumn, I read this interview with her and she was talking about how strict the classical music dress codes are. And that she was given a hard time by her instructors when she was learning music at the university level for wearing a sleeveless red dress, having a little blonde ponytail and playing violin on stage, you know? And they were saying, oh, you can't wear that. Oh, it's, it's distracting. You should be representing the music. It's not all about you. And... She made some really good points in that interview. As a matter of fact, I will link it down below so you guys can read it too, because it's awesome. And it really inspired me to make this video because <laughs> I thought I was the only one that was dealing with this kind of crap. One of the points that she made was that we shouldn't be so harshly judged on our parents because our parents is part of who we are. And the attitude that she was getting is that we're supposed to be representing the music and it's not all about us. Our attire distracts from our performance. Now, one point that she brought up is that it's kind of insulting the audience's intelligence to think that they can only focus on one thing at a time. Oh god, I can't focus on her performance, her outfit's too distracting, sort of thing. Now, the kind of thing that my singing teacher will give me as a guideline for what to wear for a performance is, you know, keep your hair back, keep it classic, keep the makeup kind of light and presentable, emphasize your features just enough so that they can really get a load of your facial expressions while you're singing. Now, she likes that I express myself the way I do. She likes that I'm comfortable in my own skin as much as I am. That I'm not afraid to go out there dressed up all gothy, even if I get uh, taunts and stuff whenever I go out in public. She loves that, and she loves the way I express myself, and she wishes that the dress codes and standards weren't so high so that I would be able to present that to people and they'd be able to appreciate, oh, there's an opera singer down there who is goth. That's kind of cool. It's kind of unexpected. That's awesome. But well, it kind of sucks. Really sucks. Now, I'm not saying that we have to entirely goth out during a performance, though that would be really nice, but being allowed uh, a little more dramatic dresses and stuff like that, being allowed a little more dramatic makeup, darker lipstick would be nice. Not, I'm not saying black lipstick at all. No. Definitely not. But darker lipstick, darker, more dramatic makeup would be nice to wear. And one point that Emily Autumn made is that if we're representing the music, it's not about us. 
that's totally preposterous. And here's why it's preposterous. When these people say that we're distracting from the performance and it's not about us, they're basically not taking into account all of the hard work that we have put into our craft, which is really annoying. It's so annoying. It's just like, no, all of the hours of singing lessons and practicing that you've done for six years doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you're not distracting from your performance and it's not about you. It kind of is about us because if it weren't for all the hard work that we were putting into what we were doing, then these classical musicians that we are performing the works of wouldn't have a voice. So it kind of is about us. And guess who wouldn't care how we dress for performances? The people who wrote it! That's the point that Emily Autumn made. I don't think Donizetti's gonna give a crap if I'm wearing my hair down and have black lipstick and have my high heels on. Come on! He's not gonna care. He's gonna be like, dude, sweet, keep doing it. I love what you're doing here, yeah. Another thing that doesn't make sense to me is with solo singers in particular, it doesn't make sense to make us blend into the background. We're going to be dressed up in dramatic costumes and outfits anyway. So what's the deal? Why make us blend into the background when if we're going to get a position in an opera house, we're gonna be dressed up in these beautiful, flamboyant, sparkly, gorgeous outfits. If you've ever been to an opera, you know what I'm talking about. Damn, you gotta appreciate that. Now, I can understand rules that regard like facial piercings and uh, heavy jewelry and stuff like that because, you know, what if you're playing cello and you're wearing long earrings, it's gonna freaking brush up against the string, it's not gonna be cool. Trust me, I play the cello, I know how that is. <laughs> it's not cool. I can understand rules like that because those kind of have to do with uh, technicality. And I understand rules about not wearing heels that are too high because they kind of interfere with your stance when you're singing or playing a solo instrument. However, I think we should be allowed more freedom to express ourselves and represent the music how we interpret it. Another thing that kind of bothers me, when I was going to uh, Washington State University to study uh, voice, this is one thing that I noticed among a lot of the voice students. You're going to find this surprising. When I told my voice teacher about this too, she was just like... What? Really? Robots? Yeah? No, she was horrified. <laughs> Here's the deal. Uh, most of the time when I perform, I give it my all. I freaking research my song like you're supposed to anyway. You're expected to know what the hell you're singing about. I would research my song, I would find out its translation, and then kind of apply the translation to each word that I'm singing. So I will incorporate the meaning of the song into my performance. Like, if I'm singing about my husband cheating on me with some other woman, I'm going to be an angry bitch and it's going to be fun. It's so fun to sing the angry bitch songs. It's great. You can really, like, go nuts with it. It's fantastic. You can really do really wide gesticulations and use angry faces and it's, it's freaking great! It's awesome! I love doing it! Anyway. And then when I get to Washington State University at the voice department, still, really still, really relaxed, perpetual like half sad, half happy face, not really moving around that much, occasional head tilting. It's like at this point I can't tell if you're singing about skipping through a happy meadow of flowers to chase a rainbow or if you are singing about your life being over and you're in complete despair. I can't freaking tell by the way that you're performing it. I can't tell. But back to the whole attire issue. You could be singing in perfect Italian or whatever the hell language you're singing in, but mostly Italian. You could sing in perfect Italian, you could have perfect diction, you could execute each note with absolute perfection right on pitch, your vibrato could be perfect, your interpretation of the performance could be perfect. Oh, but shit, you're wearing uh, freaking black lace tights. I can't pay attention to your performance, I'm sorry. Screw that! Screw that! Seriously! It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Now, with all that being said, I understand that if you're in an ensemble, you have to have some kind of uniform. I understand that. Like, if you're in a choir, you kind of have to wear uh, black and white, or 
you know, whatever. When I was in the advanced choir in high school my senior year, we had matching dresses and we had to wear a red sash because that was our uniform. The boys had to wear white dress shirts, a black vest, a red tie, and black slacks. We kind of had to look like a team, especially when we were performing outside of the Yakima area for competitions. They had to know, okay, red and black, that is the seal of Michael Lairs. That's us. And then in concert choir, we had to wear uh, white on top, black on bottom, or all black. That made sense. When you're a solo performer, you put all of this work into your performance, and you interpret the performance as you wish, you should be allowed some more freedom in how you present yourself and how you feel you should present yourself for the performance. So I hope you guys kind of appreciate this rant and appreciate what I had to say. I know my singing teacher is behind me when it comes to expressing myself more freely through my address when it comes to performing. And I'm hoping that the tides will eventually be turned where, hey, Musicians and artists are creative individuals, they should be allowed to express themselves a little more. A lot of time and effort into what they do. It is not easy. While it is hard work, it's also fun. Music is supposed to be fun. Like in Mr. Holland's Opus, if you've ever seen that. Why do you like it? Why do you like this song? Because it's fun? Exactly! Music is supposed to be fun. Music is supposed to be fun, if, and if you can't express yourself when you're having fun with it, then, you know, what's the point? Anyway, please check out Emily Autumn's interview in the description below. I'll have it linked down there. And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions about what I've said, or if you have any comments to make about what I've said, then please feel free to leave them down below. I would love to hear what you have to say and um, interact with you guys. I really love doing that. And I will see you guys later. Bye!